The problem we're doing here is very serious. It took two pages just to do the calculus, and then it's going to take probably another page or two to do the computations. Now, at the end of this video, this first part, I'm going to have solved this differential equation, and we're going to have a function p of t. Then the second part will plug in values and then figure out k and k. Now, my handwriting, big K, looks just like little k. I wrote that down here. What I'm going to do, instead of using this big K, I'm going to use M. This is supposed to be the max, even though this problem doesn't say uh, this 9,400 is the max. Now, these variables, the big K is this value, 9,400. Uh, I'm going to use M instead. So I'm going to let M equal K, because I don't want to write big and little K everywhere. It's going to confuse me. Uh, a lot of times, this little k, they use the letter r for that, but plenty of places use little k for that one as well. All right, so again, I'm putting an m in here. I'll modify it down here as well. All right, I want to solve for p, so we need to eventually take an antiderivative, uh, but not in this form. First thing we're going to do is separate everything. This is a separable differential equation, and t, because dt is in the bottom, t is going to go to the right side, and everything else I'm going to divide to the left, except k. So we're going to have 1 over p, multiply both sides by 1 over p, and multiply one, both sides by this, which is 1 over 1 minus p over m. It looks bad, but we will fix this. Uh, it's still not going to be very nice dt is multiplied to the right side. Again, the order uh, of this, because dt is in the denominator, the t, anything with t in it has to be on the right, anything with p in it has to be on the left, which is why we unfortunately have fractions to deal with. All right, I want to clean up this fraction of fractions here. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply this second fraction by a very special version of 1. I'm multiplying by m over m. That will become more obvious why I'm doing that in a minute. Now, I'm not going to change the right side of the equation for several steps. I'm not going to keep writing it until I'm done working on the left side. All right, why did I multiply by m over m? So I'm going to multiply the top m, you multiply here. The bottom m, you distribute to both the 1 and the negative p over m. So our numerator is m, denominator is m minus. Now the reason I did this is because the second part of the denominator just turns into a p. The m divided by m cancels. 1 over p dp. All right, in order to integrate this, I needed partial fractions. So I'm going to do a bunch of partial fractions down below here. This won't be very difficult partial fractions, the only annoying thing is that we're used to seeing x as the variable, and now we have p as the variable. So keep that in mind as we go through these partial fractions. Uh, once we finish partial fractions, we'll bring this back down below. So rewrite your fraction here. Uh, this equals one of my denominators is going to have a p in it. The other one is going to have m minus p. Remember, p is our variable. So this denominator is degree 1. So I need a degree 0 polynomial on top. So it's just going to be a. If this was p squared, I'd have an ap. If it was p cubed, oh, ap plus, uh, plus b. But luckily, we don't have any of that. This is a degree 1 polynomial in p. Normally, we would write it as a negative p plus m. And on top of this one, we have a b. That's a degree 0 polynomial on top of that. Now, step 1 for partial fractions, solving for a and b, you multiply by all the denominators. And on the left side, it cancels out all these denominators to just m. Right side 
A, the divided by P cancels multiplied by P, and we're left with M minus P, plus B, the M minus P divided by M minus P cancels, B times P. All right, remember P is playing the role of X, so we can choose any value we want to plug in for P. There's two smart values to use. One of them is zero, which will turn that into zero. The other one is P equals M, so we get M minus M, and that would turn into a zero. So first up, let's just go easy. Let P equal zero. Okay. M equals A times M. Again, P is zero, so M minus zero, plus, you could write plus uh, B times zero, which is zero. You can also just leave it out, because it's plus zero. All right, what is uh, A equal to by both sides by M? A equals one. All right, now we're gonna let P equal M. You can only choose P values, because P is our variable. You don't get to pick M values a values or B values are supposed to find A and B, and M is the maximum population. I could have plugged in the number before, but I wanted to leave this generic because your maximum population is probably not the same number as mine. All right, P equals M, here we go. M equals, now the first one, A times M minus P, that's turning into zero, and we get B times M, and again, divide both sides by M, we get one equals B. All right, we're done with partial fractions now. And I'm gonna write the final result we got, one over P times M divided by M minus P equals, now I'm rewriting these with just a one for A and a one for B, one over P plus one over M minus P. All right, why do we do this? So we could integrate, I probably should have put a parenthesis up here before, but just so we can integrate this right here. Uh, I'll rewrite the right side, k dt. Now we're gonna bring all this stuff down. equals k d t. All right, I'm going to make that partial fractions um, equivalence up here that I just wrote down. So we have 1 over p plus 1 over m minus p dp equals k d t. All right, we're finally now ready to do calculus. We're about to I should definitely have parentheses when you have a plus in here, but you can do parentheses here as well. Integrate both sides, so that's our calculus move. All right, left side, antiderivative of one over p dp is natural log p plus, I'm gonna guess here, now the antiderivative of this is probably natural log ln m minus p, ugly ln, I can write better, ln m minus p. I'm gonna check by taking a derivative and making sure I'm right, and when I take the derivative, I get one over m minus p times the derivative of negative p, which is negative one. So I would've gotten negative what I wanted. So to cancel that out, I'll put the negative here. Right side, antiderivative of k dt is kt. We do need the plus constant. That is important. You can pick what side to put it on. Uh, I'm putting it on the right side. Okay, we're done with calculus, but now we have to solve for P. Easier said than done. Now, I wish P appeared in one place. Unfortunately, P is appearing twice. So we're subtracting logs, which means you can rewrite it as division inside of a log. That's ln of p divided by m minus p. Equals kt plus c. All right, get the natural log out of here. We're going to take the exponential function of both sides. 
So the right side becomes e to the kt plus c. The left side, the ln disappears. All right, we're a little closer to solving for p. Unfortunately, p still, still appears twice. The algebra on this is a bit tricky. Uh, before I do anything on the left, I'm going to rewrite the right side. And the sum of exponents is the same as multiplying bases. From here, I'm going to let a equal e to the c. Remember, c is a constant. So e to the c is a different constant, and I'm just calling that other constant a. And it lets me write it a little more nicely like this. All right. From here, if you remember implicit differentiation from Calculus 1, you probably did some algebra steps that are pretty similar to this. What I'm going to do is multiply by the denominator, which is m minus p. Now distribute right here. trying to solve for p, so now I can get all the p on one side, and we have p plus p a e to the kt. Now p is not a constant, so I can't replace this by a new constant, uh, because again p is a variable. And what is left? m a e to the kt. All right, here, my favorite F word, factor. Factor out that P. That's exactly why we did all this work, all that algebra to get here. Uh, you don't have to rewrite the right side, didn't change. I'm dividing by what's in the parentheses here. M A E to the K T divided by one plus A E to the K T. All right, this is solved for p. p is now written as a function of t. The only problem is it's an ugly function of t. You probably saw a slightly prettier version. So how do we make this nicer? A couple ways to do it. I'm, gonna, I'm going to factor out the a. They both have an a, numerator, denominator. Numerator factoring is trivial. Denominator factoring, a little less trivial. All right, I factored an a out of a 1. What in the world does that turn into? It turns into a 1 over a. Again, if you distribute a back in, you can see I get 1 plus a e to the kt. I think you can tell the top is fine. No need to worry extra about that. Okay. Why did I do all this? Well, I can cancel the a. I do have 1 over a. And let's give it a new name. Uh, just call it, I'm tempted to call it a naught, but that might imply that it happens when uh, time is 0. Yeah, I'll just call it a naught. Now you guys, you can call it b. So I'll let b equal 1 over a. I'm renaming my constants, all I'm doing. Uh, we did the same thing a minute ago. Somewhere up here, rename that constant. All right, just rename, renaming the constant. All right, we can do a, this is pretty decent. It's not bad. We can do a little bit better. We can do the same thing, but with e to the kt, I can factor out e to the kt. Denominator, it's a little bit tricky. It's b divided by e to the kt. 
plus one. All right, that lets you cancel these e to the kt. 